the course to give me another theology where I can go around and, and tell people, you know, this is the way it is, and we're projecting this, and we're doing this, and, and telling people things. I mean, that once again we get back into that, that like talking about, you know, where where it can become like another religion. We don't need another religion. We've got we've had enough religions, you know, in this thing. And Jesus says that 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 the course doesn't aim that there can never be a universal theology. There's never going to be a time on this planet where everybody has like one religion and everyone goes, yeah, do you believe that? So do I. You know. <laughs> the ego is this fragmented thing where everybody has a perceived different self-concept and different beliefs and, no, and within the perception of the world, you know, that there won't be any universal theology, but there can and must be a universal experience. And to me, that's how I know I'm, I'm getting to forgiveness, is the feelings of peace and the feelings of, of joy, of, of really enjoying these connections and enjoying these these dialogues. The waking up process, in the ultimate sense, takes place in the mind. It's from looking at the false beliefs in the mind without fear, calmly looking on them and just seeing them as false. And that's, those questions about, a lot of times those come in about, you know, being here and gosh, I'm getting, I've had people come up to me in seminars that, that are elderly or something and they'll, they'll say, I, if only I had had this book when I was young, you know, or da 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 da. But it's still those age time concepts that are very much tied up in the ego system. And, and, the, and the age of the body or the passion of the body has no, has no effect on the mind. And it's the mind That purpose is what brings the fusion 
that you talked about it on. But as long as it's kind of a, as long as I'm going to hold tight to the corral, then gradually as I open the corral door, that purpose starts getting more and more clear in my awareness. It just moves through me. It just, it literally, it's, of course, as Hill Spirit will tell you what to do and where to go and, and what to say. Wow. It's, you know, it's like that gives a sense of ease and effortlessness where I won't have to be struggling with each decision that I make, that there'll be this presence that'll start moving through me. So that's that, the Course calls it one in ten, it calls it singleness of purpose, it's, it's called um, goal. There's a passage I think I mentioned last time, the peace of God is my one goal, the aim of all my living here, the end I seek, my purpose and my function in my life. That's coming at something. <laughs> but it's like he's, he's holding it in there. He's saying it's there. It's the Holy Spirit in your mind. and it's, He's guiding you to let go of all these other um, goals that, that block your purpose from your mind. And releasing what's in the corral, those attachments, um, is what makes room for that one intent or that one purpose to be really what the mind is riveted on. Because the mind will, you know, rivet on what is desired. And if what's in the corral is what's desired, that's what the mind, the attention is given to. And if that's released, then the mind is freed up to rivet itself on that one purpose. So it's kind of like to get to, to that one purpose is letting go of those attachments to the corral. Yeah. The ego would have a have us believe that to open up the corral is to make ourselves vulnerable. Right. Because to the ego, that that is very threatening. That, that always struck me too in a lot of the readings I read. You know, where they always talk about risk, honesty, risk being invulnerable and everything. And and you know, one day it just as I was reading the course, it, it dawned on me those two words, risk, honesty. <laughs> I mean, true honesty. It seems that way at the beginning because to the ego, honesty is a threat. <laughs> Total consistency, total laying aside deception. The ego says, "Hey, I can't be honest. I'll be out of business. <laughs> my whole, my whole existence, so to speak, the ego's is based on mirrors and schemes and games. And, and total honesty is is this consistency of thought and action and word and deed that the ego is very afraid of. So it really does seem that way at the beginning. It seems like it's, there's a real vulnerability, and it seems like it's a risk." If you've been used to repressing, then it still feels like one. It right. feels like one. Right. But if it doesn't, then it's like it's like more of a an accepted growth. I don't know how to say that. Was there a particular question or aspect of relationship that you wanted to address? Or, or, or? Well, um, yeah, I, I think I'm. Uh, I'd like to address the, um, the relationship of what we call it, special, special relationship. Uh, I'd like to understand more about what those relationships are for and, and why they're here. And, um, you know, just I, I really didn't know anything about it, and uh, I'm just now reading about that in the course. Mm -hmm. I mean, the same guys have done some work on that. Well, if we just go back to the metaphysics and kind of look at why specialness was made or why special relationships were made, I think I addressed in the first one, but I'll address it again, that, that in a sense, once the separation seemed to occur in an instant, it was answered <laughs> in an instant. And that answer was the Holy Spirit in our minds. So that's how quick that this world lasted as one instant. But it's like the ego wants to call forth, wants to keep the mind invested in believing that, that, that the past is still here. It doesn't want to be free of the present. The ego use of time is it says, skip over the present. You're guilty in the past. And it's been that way for a long time. It's not going to change. You know, it's that depressing kind of a thinking where it's like, been bad in the past and it's going to be bad in the future and you don't have any power to change it kind of a victim 
Whereas the Holy Spirit says, now is your point of power, so to speak. And right now, you can get in touch with things, with beliefs, you can make decisions, you can be open to another way of seeing and looking at right now. And the Holy Spirit uses the past to, to bring the mind to the holy instant. And the way this relates metaphysically is that we mentioned that the belief of separation occurred and was answered in an instant. And the ego's, so to speak, answer to the, to the correction or to the Holy Spirit was the special relationship. And because this is a way of, of seeming to provide something outside, something on the screen that is so attractive that the mind won't want to go within to that light. He wants, wants to get caught up in something there. And that's why the special relationship is, is the, I think it calls it the most boasted weapon uh, that, that the ego has, because it's like the ace card, that the pain, I know in my life, that I've experienced through the special relationships has been carved quite deep, and it's, and it's hit deep things that I didn't even know were, were there. And, and the dynamics beneath it is, it's, it's like, now that the mind buys this belief of separation, it, it actually is afraid of the light, afraid of the Holy Spirit at this point, and the darkened mind is, because it believes that it actually pulled off the separation. It actually did this, pulled off the impossible, which is separate from its, its creator, which is really a horrifying thought. Mm -hmm. And to believe in that is just a, is very horrifying, and that's this ontological guilt and fear that's, that's buried really, really deep within the mind. So we'll just call this, this is the belief in separation. So now a self-concept, a world and personhood, and I'm now a person in the world, all this, all these ideas and beliefs are learned and, and built up on here to cover over that cornerstone. Because the ego says that if, if you go to that cornerstone and you lift that cornerstone, then God's going to be there. And, and the ego says you really did it. You separated from God, and He will get you. He will. He will come after you for what you've done. You've actually stolen from heaven, or you pulled yourself away from the kingdom. You know, and He's angry about it. So the ego keeps screeching, "Don't ever, ever, ever go near that cornerstone." We'll make a bunch of beliefs. We'll build a world that you can become involved in and distracted in, that you won't ever go back to that point. And the special relationships; those are the things that are part of the the dream world that um, that are very attractive. In other words, we there are, the Course talks about special hate relationships and special love relationships. And the special hate relationships are the obvious ones. More, it's not quite so insidious or difficult to see because it gets back to that projection that we've been talking about before. You've got this guilt, the ego says, unload it. You don't like this person. Get get out of get them out of your life. <laughs> Get as far away as you can from them, you know. But you know, it's okay to hate some people. The ego counsels, and that's its way of dumping the guilt and getting rid of it and blaming. But the special love is the flip side, where is I I seek for a partner or I seek for persons, whether they be children or spouses or parental relationships or best friends or whatever, that will make me forget about all this unconscious stuff that I can stay so distracted in form, I can stay so distracted with them, and I can make a bargain, you know, with them, and that even if I can get them to meet my needs a lot of the time, they will serve as a God substitute, you know. But still the mind is deceived and it believes that it's lacking, you know, it still believes that it's been kicked out of the kingdom and everything, so it's like, well, he says, go for what you can, you know, eat, drink, and be merry, <laughs> or you're going to die, and and get as many people and friends that, that, that can be these close. Sometimes only one, or sometimes the focus of a group. Um, you know, it can be it can, special relationships can come in lots of ways, or it could even be with things. You know, where you know I'm fed up with all kinds of people. I never want to go near men or women again. I've had enough of that pain. I'm just gonna go find myself a good mountain and build myself a log cabin and get myself some quilts or knitting or something I like to do and heck with it. You know, or animals. Or animals. Yeah. Uh, any kind of yeah. person. Academics. I'll become the smartest, whatever, the best botanist in the world or whatever career. It doesn't so much matter what it is, but, but that's why it's, it's set up that way. 
And that's where